What's up, YouTube? Angry Jack Love Raw Bricks. Oh, man, oh, man. I am fucking sick. Uh, but I told you guys I was going to go ahead and rock this shit out. So <clears throat> let's just go ahead and get this shit started. Uh, it's kind of kind of dark. I don't. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can fix this a little bit. It's kind of dark. Hang on. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Sorry about that, guys. So, as you can see, I look like dog shit. I like dog shit warmed over. But, that, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, when you get fucking sick, <clears throat> which I don't, I don't get sick very often. But when I get sick, it's like my body is like saying, you know what, motherfucker, let's make up for lost time and let's really get shit rocking. You know what I mean? So... I get uh, I get really fucking sick, and you know, unfortunately for me, I don't have a job where I can sit and say, uh, "Hey, Mister Boss Man, I I'm sick. I need to take a day off because I I am a uh, contractor. I don't have days off. I don't get sick days. I don't get none of that bullshit. Uh, and part of that is because I just refuse to work for the man. I'm not going to work for the man." <clears throat> I'm going to try my best to not cough in your guys' face and stuff. And when I have to do nasty shit, like blow my nose and stuff like that, I won't like show it to like an MTV logo or nothing like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep this as uh, nasty free as possible, if you know what I mean. So let's see here. Uh, stream health looks good. I see uh, got a couple folks watching. I'm looking at the indicators over there. Looks good. Looks like everything is going the way it's supposed to go. I'm going to move the chat over here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to restore the chat over here like this. And then I'm going to go. What's up, Nomadic Hunter? You know what? This shit better. There we go. What's up, brother? All right. So I'm going to attempt to do the show like I normally do. It might run a little more than an hour. It might run a little less than an hour. It all depends on how my my punk ass hangs. Um, let's just go ahead and normally... Hang on a second. Did I just, my alarms just beep? Hang on one second. This is a fucking snafu-filled episode. Let's see. You might hear some sounds in the background too, like a fan or something. That's because it's hot as fuck. And I got an air conditioner blowing. Um, I hope it's not too fucking bad, but, you know, we'll fucking see. I'm trying to wait. I'm stalling to hear if that thing fucking beeps again. I'm waiting. I don't hear anything. Maybe my ears are just bugging out on me. I don't know. But anyway, uh, normally around this time, I drink. Uh, I take a couple of shots and things like that. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sip some beverage from Coke. Ah, my tasty beverage. And I'm going to wipe my sick nose for a second. Because the last thing I want is to go like this and have some fucking boogers showing and shit like that. Okay, so we're just going to get into the actual news. I got a lot of cover. Uh, it's been a pretty, pretty interesting uh, week thus far. So... On the financial front, I found a pretty good video by a guy I follow on YouTube called BP Earthwatch. And for me, the most compelling part of his video entitled U.S. Breaking Collapse 2017 Surviving the Coming Catastrophe uh, starts around 15 minutes in. At 15 minutes in, there's a gentleman um, who has tons and tons of credibility that is uh, a pretty straight shooter. And I really liked how he presented things. And so, uh, no, Matt, you're 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 perfectly fine, brother. We're just we're just getting shit started. Um, excuse me. Oh man, this is gonna be rough. Um, so yeah, so check that out because I thought that was actually pretty good clip talking about uh, 
timelines, when things could pop off, things of that nature. So, you know, definitely take a look at that and kind of leading into that same basic breakdown. You know, we have yet more cyber attack brewing news on the underbelly. So experts have warned that devastating global cyber attack is imminent. The hack called Exploding Can targets computers running on Microsoft Windows 2003, which means it could be used to attack 375,000 computers worldwide. What does that mean to you? Probably nothing. But uh, what it could do is it could spark off uh, some financial shit because there are some companies that still use antiquated hardware. And if you're running, I mean, antiquated software, if you're running Windows 2003, that's older stuff. Uh, there's 2008 and 2013, respectively, I believe, uh, upgrades since then. But I personally know a lot of companies that are still using 2003 just because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's their mentality. So that could be a piece of the puzzle. And, and we'll just keep an eye on that shit. Now, I want to share with you guys something that I had a little epiphany uh, not too long ago. Uh, first, first and foremost, there was another bit of news on Kim Jong-un. I might as well get this out of the way. Uh, he shot a series of ballistic missiles that I don't know where they fucking went. But for Mr. Kim Jong-un, I do have a special message here for you. There you go. <gasps> what? There's a ballistic missile for you. Yes, indeed, motherfucker. So that, you know, a little bit of humor. This shit's getting kind of blah. Um, I was sitting there talking with some folks the other day about Trump. And regardless of whatever you think about him, if you like him, you don't like him, whatever, or even if you're indifferent, you do know that he does do, hey, Bertha, um, he does do a lot of tweeting. Well, uh, I kind of defended Trump, and it was kind of funny because everybody knows that I personally don't like him. Um, I just don't like his mannerisms and things of that nature. And I think he's fucking endless amount of fun. But, uh, you know, I'm still a little perturbed over the whole, the whole deal between having him and Hillary as candidates. I always thought that was just stupid. But anyway, um, the thing people aren't taking into consideration, like somebody made a comment. How is a seven-year-old man using Twitter all the time? What's the appeal? And I'm like, okay, you don't understand. And I think I've mentioned this a, a few times on the show before. When you use social media, when you get a like, you get a repost, you get something else, you get a dopamine hit. And it's the same type of thing that, you know, people, when they drink, they smoke or whatever, they get. And it can be addicting. So I threw out this term, you know, Trump can't help himself. He's a Twitterholic. And they're like, a what? I said a Twitterholic. You know, it's the same brain areas that are being stimulated when he he's tweeting. Um, and, I mean, you know, if you look at Churchill and you look at a bunch of other folks, I mean, we had alcoholics inside of uh, uh, politics and things like that. So why not have somebody who's addicted to Twitter? I don't see why that's that big of a deal. But people kind of was like, really? You do you think that's a thing? And I'm like, I know it's a fucking thing. But anyway, enough of that. The next piece I want to touch on is Xanax. So right now, I read an article that said we have gone from being uh, Prozac, uh, Prozac nation to Xanax nation. And as I read the article, a couple of things did occur to me that made me get, get gave me pause and made me go, yeah, that's that's actually true. So. I look around and I see a whole lot of stupidity and a lot of stuff that just, you know, for me, just seems really silly. But I didn't take into consideration what the younger generation is probably feeling while all of this bullshit's going down. So you've got all of this gender shit, like, oh, I associate with a fucking Apache helicopter, things of that nature. Um, you know, factor in uh, all of the social media factor in all of the terrorist attacks factor in all this other stuff that the younger generation is just getting bombarded with. Um, and it's no wonder that we have this huge addicted country to Xanax. And then when you add on the potential of nuclear warfare, which hasn't been, you know, hasn't been a looming boogeyman since I was a kid. Uh, it becomes suddenly a very terrifying existence for some of these kids that have not been 
uh, mentally prepared to handle these types of things. And so what do they do? They give them these fucking pills and they feel better and that's it. They throw a pill at it and that's, that's the solution, right? So I thought about that for a second. It was like, wow, you know, that's, that's a kind of, that's a kind of really scary proposition when you think about it. Like when I was growing up, if, if something was scary or something, my dad made me face it. You know, if I said there's a monster under the bed, he snatched me and threw me down under the bed. Uh, so show me the monster. Um, you know, if I was afraid of the dark, he would take the lights and he would shut them off. Uh, if I was scared of the water, he'd throw me in the fucking water. Now, you know, it is what it is. I'm not saying that's the right or the wrong way of doing things. I'm saying that's how I grew up and a lot of other people grew up. But these kids now, uh, being told they're perfect little snowflakes, they're ill-equipped to handle the, you know, and, and it's funny because they call them millennials, but I saw a term popped up today that kind of kind of summed it up for me. There's a new term out called Generation Alpha. Okay? Now, you can look at that in two different distinct ways. You can look at an alpha male as a dominant male, and he's the one pounding on his chest, I fucking run shit, woo, 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 whatever. Or, hey, what's up, Jeep things? Or you can look up... Uh, Alpha in regards to software, which means uh, scared of fire, throw you in a pit. I don't think my dad would have did, gone that far with it. You know what I mean? I think everything that he did was somewhat measured, and he knew it wasn't gonna fucking wasn't gonna kill me. But it would have been fucking somewhat ironic if he threw me down and there was a monster under the bed and they ate my ass in front of him. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But uh, the other way to look at alpha is when you look at software. So when I write code and I release alpha code, it's unfinished. It means that it's a work in progress. So there's a more sinister annotation that you could look at generation alpha. You know, what follows after that be alpha, beta, and then, you know, the final release, right? So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Enough of the negative doom and gloom and all that other bullshit. Let's get into the entertainment shit. So... You might recognize this broad right here from uh, Prometheus. She was the chick that was on there. She's also been in a couple other movies I can't recall off the top of my head. She did one where, um, oh, what was it called? They uh, kidnapped her and they submitted her to a bunch of horrifying experiments to make her genes pop off and prove that she was an alien or some shit. Excuse me. Uh, but anyway, this move, this show right here, um, actually, it's a movie. Is all uh, what happened to Monday? So this has William Defoe and her playing multiple roles. So what happened was this guy ended up having seven kids inside of a, a dystopian world where you're only allowed to have one kid. But since they were all identical, he kept them. But he named them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they could only go out on those days. And I thought, you know, that's pretty, that's a pretty intriguing thing. So they're acting like they're the exact same person, but they can only go out on certain days. And anyway, Monday goes out on Monday and doesn't come back. And so everybody starts freaking out. Like, we got to go find our sister. we got to find her and find out what's going on. Hang on a second, guys. Excuse me. So that movie looks pretty entertaining. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. Next one we're going to go talk about is Dark Tower. They got a, a clip I put down in the, the, uh, the description in the bottom of the stream here. It has a cool little TV piece. Looks really good. I'm really excited about this fucking movie. Uh, I can't wait for this shit to pop off because it looks, it looks really good. This, this particular actor uh, not the pop Funko thing there, but the actual guy that plays him, man, I, I really, really like him as an actor. He's got uh, a lot of emotion and a lot of expression in what he does, and he always brings it in every fucking movie he does. From Thor to uh, there was a TV series I saw him in that was pretty fucking intense. But yeah, this dude's popping off. He's he's doing a lot of different shit. But this one right here, Dark Tower, woo, I'm looking forward to it. Looking good. This next one is, I think it's a streaming show. I'm not sure. I got to find more on it. I saw the trailer, and that's what's linked down below, but it's called Oats, O-A-T-S. And 
it is is interesting and i want you to look at this fucking lizard dude right here because i'm seeing kind of a a trend on these reptilian amphibious alien type shit and so i just want you guys to remember that shit because uh it seems to be something that is becoming kind of a kind of a trend so I don't know. I suspect that this this particular one right here is an alien. Speaking of aliens, we have uh -oh, this movie popping off called uh, the Gracefield Incident, and this the premise on this shit's kind of cool because the dude has a fake eye. And for my boy Matt, if you happen to watch this, I got your fake eye right here. Hey, that kind of looks. Kind of looks like the same, same fucking eye there, don't it? And for you wondering why I have a fake eye, that's a long story. But anyway, homeboy puts a camera in his shit, and uh, he's hanging out with his friends, and then they see some alien shit, and he captures it all on his fucking eyeball. So this could be kind of interesting lost footage type film. Uh, it looks fun. Like, I look forward to seeing it. I'm going to check it out. Let's keep a going. And then yesterday, I was really thrilled that the trailer for Black Panther popped off. And that one had me tickled because uh, it looks like it's going to be fucking good. It looks like it's going to be intense. Um, it looks like it's going to be some really good CG. It looks like it's going to have has the same guy that was inside of uh, the arms dealer that was inside of uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Because he was the only one that was ever in Wakanda. So it's going to be fucking kind of trip trip. We'll see what's going on with that one. Now let's talk about some TV shows coming up. Got some good TV shows coming up. Uh, Stephen King. One of one of the most disturbing uh, movies that I had ever seen was The Mist. And I think what made it really disturbing to me and my family was the fact that at the very end, uh, the way that it ended. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen that actual movie. I did not dig the ending. Um, if it were me and my family, we probably would have survived everything. Uh, if you saw that movie, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. But this right here looks to be interesting. Like They took the mythology of it, and it looks like they're going to do a whole series on it. Now, this is not the first time somebody's done something like this with Stephen King. Uh, property. They've done it before with um, Haven, which was an outstanding series that started from like a little short story that he did. Uh, they also did it with Under the Dome. Um, and I don't know if that ended out very well. Me and my son, we watched season one and season two, and I don't, I didn't ever see season three. Don't even know if it got to season three or not. But uh, that was a, that was actually pretty a pretty good show. So, you know, Stephen King has a wealth of information. I'm not a wealth of information, but a wealth of intellectual property that a lot of these folks like to pull from to make uh, to make TV shows and things of that nature. So The Mist, I mean, here you can see a very graphic scene here where it looks like the bottom half of this bitch's jaw has been pulled off and she's got her tongue like a fucking Maori or, a, uh, or the goddess Kali, you know. Ah, you know, and it's like fucking... That that scene in the trailer is like a split fucking second, but it looks like it's going to be pretty fucking dark. It looks like it's going to be some dark shit. So anytime something dark pops off, I'm, I'm a big fucking fan of it. Uh, so that's coming out. Now, also, you guys have been hearing me talk about Blood Drive to the point where you're probably just sick of it. But um, that shit's not fucking playing. Look at that. That animated GIF is not fucking playing. Well, fuck it. It is what it is. I also have this as a backup. So this clip right here, this little piece here looks pretty funny. Cannibals, lawmen, monsters, nymphos. Wait, Rob, did you say fucking nymphos? Well, if you didn't see, not last week, but the last episode, there was the clip of the suck bus. Uh, this is a very fun, family-friendly scene right here where you've got a bunch of hoes bending down to take off their panties about to go on to what they, they are calling the uh, suck bus. So, yeah, this show looks like it is just going to be all kinds of fucking wrong. And I like that shit. Now, a few episodes back, I was I failed to shine some light on this show that's popping off called, um, called The Orville. 
not to be confused with Oroville Redenbacher's delicious popcorn, just plain the Oroville, right? So what's fun about this is it's a spoof off of Star Trek, but I have to say, in some ways, this looks a little bit more entertaining than some of the recent Star Trek shit that's popped off. And if I said Star Wars, I'm a fucking idiot. I meant to say Star Trek. I can't remember. My brain is in a fog right now. But this uh, husband and wife are going to captain this fucking ship, and they are just going to go all over the fucking place and have some fucking fun with it. That looks way fun. Not too long ago, uh, a good friend of mine, Roy, messaged me a trailer, or not a trailer, but a short video for this thing called Shallow Water and has a monster in it. And notice that this monster also kind of has that reptilian amphibious monster motif that is becoming, again, pretty uh, prevalent. So anyway, I watched it. It's a really good, engaging clip. I got it linked down below. Check that shit out. Let's keep it going. More YouTube funness. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's this fucking guy. I swear to God, this dude is fucking brilliant. He does this this African warlord drug cartel dude, and he he gets information about people through normal means, you know, hacking means, and then he just scares the shit out of them. Uh, this is the latest video that he just dropped off. It's called African Rebel Calls Kids Phone on Call of Duty. It is fucking amazing. It's great. It is fucking. If you haven't seen this series and you're not a, you're not uh, aware of it, you're gonna want to go get aware with it because the shit is fucking phenomenal. It's really good. Uh, let's go. Uh, what else? Speaking of games, um, there's a new game popping off called Vampire, and the trailer for it looked really good. Looked really good. It didn't have a lot of gameplay footage. It looked to be kind of an intro piece, but I liked it. I liked it a lot, and I thought it was intriguing enough that I wanted to share with you folks. So E3 is popping off. Uh, there's going to be a whole slew of game information is going to come out in the next, I think probably in the next week or so. But I wanted you guys to check this shit out because this one looked pretty good. This is one of the early ones that popped off. Now, <clears throat> Excuse me. I also had the chance to watch Wonder Woman uh, last week, and uh, I really liked it. Uh, there's a few people that said they didn't like it, and for the life of me, I don't know why. Uh, I thought it was actually really well done. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, she's fucking beyond hot, but that hotness didn't fuck with anything. At no point was I like, oh my god, look at her boobs, or oh my god, look at this. Like Everything just felt right, and I really enjoyed it. And so I went with my daughters, I went with my wife, we all watched it, and they felt empowered, and it was really fucking awesome, and, you know, it's, it's about time that we have a, uh, a very strong female character that uh, is not cliched and stupid, you know what I mean? Um, and not too over the top with the whole feminine, feminist shit and everything else. I really liked her. I thought it was a fucking great fucking show. Um, so that's it. That's that's the news. That's all the shit that I've got. So, you know, that's it, guys. I put I put I put some content together for you. Uh, now is the time. We got forty minutes left on deck. I have a story I could tell you guys. I came across uh, I came across some stuff uh, recently that gave me a flashback to when I was a kid and a conversation I had had with my mom when I was uh, a lot younger uh, about shadow people and uh, a particular type of shadow people that um, really scared my mom, but I, I don't really have a whole lot of recollection of it other than, uh, you know, um, other than her and me talking about some things that had happened when I was younger and things like that. So anyway, uh, I'm not sure if the chat's working. I see the last comment was from Matt. I see 13 folks on. I want you guys to sound off and say what's up so I know that this shit's working the way it's supposed to. Meanwhile, while you guys are catching up because there's a fucking time delay, I'm going to do my best Samuel Jackson, Jackson impression and drink this tasty beverage. Look at the 
Chainsaw Brad. <clears throat> if I don't see anything inside of chat, you know, I'll try to unstick the chat here. I'll say, what's up? Okay, Matt says it's still going. What's up? Question. Bam. Look at that. I can, ta I can, I can stream and chat at the same time. What's up? All right. I guess what I'll do is <clears throat> while you guys figure out if you have any questions or anything else, I will go ahead and tell you guys this fucking story of the shadow man. Where's that fucker at? Not here. Not here. Ah, this one. Bam. <clears throat> One day I will tell you. The pig fucker story. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. <coughs> All right, so. Uh, one day I was sitting here, I was talking to my mom, and I was talking about uh, uh, sleep apnea, which I have. And uh, sleep apnea is basically, uh, there's several points while I'm sleeping where I stop I stop breathing. Um and mine is not mine is not a physiological one, meaning I don't have an obstruction in my air passage or anything else. Mine is purely uh what's up Roy I was talking about you earlier, brother. Um I was telling everybody how you uh shared with me the shallow water clip. Um, anyway, getting back to the story, <clears throat> hang on, gotta clear my throat here. Uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Um, so mine is a neurological thing. Like even when I was a baby, magic ghost in his house. Hey, hey, hey what's up, first brother? Um, I would, uh, stop breathing even as a baby. So it's uh, my entire life. I've had this particular, uh, situation. Now I treat it with a uh, CPAP. So I have this ridiculous looking mask that I wear and I look like scuba Steve. I am scuba Steve. And I sleep with this fucking thing. Anytime I sleep, if I go to take a nap, I go upstairs and plug into this fucking machine. If I go at night, I plug into this. I, I travel. I bring this bitch everywhere. I fucking go. It's, it's that important for me. Uh, if I don't use the, the CPAP, I just feel like a walking zombie. I just feel completely drained and dead, kind of like how I feel right now. So if I didn't have the, the CPAP, I'd be really fucked in the game right now. But anyway, um, I was talking to my mom. Oh, that fucking sucks, dude. Why the fuck? Oh, see, I hate that shit. Magic, I have obstructive sleep apnea. Need a CPAP, but insurance won't pay for it. And the fucked up thing is, like, I can get you a CPAP, but they have to be dialed into you. You can't just grab a CPAP and slap it on. Like, you actually have to do some testing with it to find the optimum setting. Otherwise, you end up doing more harm than good. It's fucking, that's stupid, dude. See, that shit pisses me off. I don't even, don't even get me started on the whole healthcare shit. It's fucking dumb. Um, so when I was a kid, my mom said I had this imaginary friend. And all I called him was the hat man. Okay. And my mom ignored it for the longest time. Like, whatever. It's a little imaginary friend, whatever. But then she started saying the hat man was telling me to do crazy shit. Now, I don't remember none of this shit. Okay. I don't. I mean, I was little, little. Four or five. Somewhere around there. But. Whoa. Freaky. So they're talking about fucking crazy ass shit. And I got a fucking bug crawling on my fucking neck. Ugh. Heebie-jeebies. Um, so anyway, my mom got kind of freaked out. She fucking took me to a fucking therapist and all this shit. I remember the therapist because the therapist had me draw pictures for days and all this other stuff and the therapist would tell me ways to deal with shit and all this other and I was like, whatever. So eventually the shadow man went away. Okay? The, the hat man. <clears throat> so, you know, I didn't drip on it, you know. But imagine my surprise years and years and years later, especially I started getting in all kinds of conspiracy shit, supernatural stuff. I start coming across all the shit on shadow people. 
and there is a prevalent type of shadow person calls uh called the the called the hat man um it was telling me to do shit like hurt myself it was telling me to do stuff like uh hurt animals it was telling me to do different things and so you know before i would do anything i'd tell my mom hey you know mr hat wants to go do this and she's like what no you can't do that i'm like okay i thought that was a bad idea but you know you know just stupid stupid things like oh go run down the street you know and my mom was smart enough to keep me on a pretty tight leash cuz i was already a high strung fucking kid you know i did fuck i got kicked out of a ch- i got banned from a fucking church uh at the ripe old age of 6 I got straight banned from a church. They were like, don't bring that motherfucker ever here again. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I had never, I never thought about it again, but then I see pictures like this shit and it, it kind of strikes a chord in me. It really kind of hits me funny. And the funny thing was I didn't realize that I was undiagnosed with sleep apnea for a long time. So I would have sleep paralysis where I would, I would fall asleep and it would feel like something was pushing on my chest you know, and, um, I'd have these horrible fucking nightmares and I'd wake up and I'd be freaked the fuck out. Well, later on, I found I had sleep apnea. And so I'm sitting there and I'm trying to breathe and I'm trying to breathe, but I'm not, and I'm basically suffocating. And then I sit up and go, <gasps> you know, so lo and behold, there was a logical explanation to why I was having these problems. Now, you know, you could also argue that, you know, there could be other because I don't have obstructive and I don't have a physical thing, they, they call mine a mental issue. Uh, you know, if you want to go down the woo woo line and say, well, maybe something was feeding on me and caused some kind of a defect or something, you could say that too. But, you know, I think more, more than, uh, uh, I think more than anything else, I think the reality is, uh, I was born premature. There was a part of the brain that didn't develop the way it was supposed to that controlled and regulated breathing. And so every so often I would just forget to breathe. And so things like a CPAP, which has negative air pressure, it handles no problem. Because, you know, if you would think there's some kind of a supernatural uh, cause for it, then it would be very unlikely that something like a CPAP would be um, a remedy, right? Because you would say the entity would just come over, push the fucking button on my CPAP and fuck with me. Now, that's funny. I mentioned that today we had a power failure at about 721 in the morning. And I'm sitting there and I'm sleeping. It's all, and now sudden power cuts off, and I suffocated in my mask because I was like, and I sat up and I pulled my mask off and I had this huge coughing fit because I gasped. And as soon, as soon as I gasped, the air hit the back of my throat and I have this really bad tickle back there. And then boom, I just started coughing, 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 coughing until I damn near passed out. <clears throat> so you know it was kind of fucking, kind of ironic in that regard. But you know, other than that, uh, I just saw this this picture. Uh, and it it got my mind thinking. I thought, yeah, that'd be a fun little, uh, fun little fucking story to share with you folks in case I ran out of, ran out of content, because I had I had figured, I had figured, you know, I had a bunch of links and some other stuff that I have been grabbing throughout the week. But I've just been, I've been exhausted, guys. I've been sick of shit. Yeah, I do have a battery backup. Uh, I have two battery backups, as a, as a matter of fact. I've got a battery backup here, and I've got a battery backup in the office. Uh, I don't have a battery backup on my CPAP, uh, which is probably smarter to have. Uh, I'm just cheap, because the battery backups that I bought in the past were about 100 bucks, And I'm like, eh, I don't have power outages enough for me to freak out and go, oh my god, I'm suffocating. You know what I mean? It's not I don't have enough power outages to make me go. Yeah, that's 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 needed. <laughs> Need to tell you a story about our man with the hat, dude. I'm telling you, it's 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 a uh, a reoccurring thing that I I researched and I was like, wow, I didn't realize there was that many that that huge of a prevalence with man in a hat stories. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to hear yours. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up at some point, but anyway, um, as I mentioned, when I first started the show here, uh, I look like shit cause I've been sick. Um, and being that I'm a contractor, you know, whatever 
<laughs> if I don't work, I don't eat. So there is no, hey, can I have a day off? And uh, the sad thing was, even though I was sick, the the masters that be kept cracking that whip. You know, hey, we need to get it done, need to get it done, need to get it done. And uh, there were a couple of nights I was up till really fucking late getting shit done. And then the next morning up early working on stuff. And then it, <laughs> oh, I got another story to tell you. And then I had a dumpster that showed up. Uh, we we're supposed to be working on the backyard. And all the the planning and shit just went to hell. Uh, so I'm working on the backyard and trying to get stuff ready for this damn dumpster. Uh, dumpster shows up. We waited for the dumpster to show up. Dumpster shows up. I tell the guy I got to run some fucking errands. I'll be back. He's like, cool. He's just going to dump it in front of my house and he'll pick it up Saturday this morning. I'm like, cool. I'm gone for all of an hour. I come back in one fucking hour and half the dumpster is full. These cocksuckers in my fucking neighborhood, and we all, I've had conversations with the whole fucking neighborhood. We've all understand the way this shit works. If you want a dumpster, you can request a dumpster every two months. You call in, you put yourself on a schedule, they tell you the available dates, and a dumpster comes out, and it's in front of your house for two fucking days, and, you know, it's just etiquette to knock on the door and say, hey, I got a couple of things, would you mind I throw it in? And these motherfuckers threw in, I shit you not, they threw in a fucking dryer, they threw in a sofa, they threw in... um a bunch of tires, which you're not supposed to fucking put in there. Um, and you're not supposed to put that big-ass dryer. That's a giant appliance. You're not supposed to put that shit in. And these motherfuckers put shit in they're not supposed to, which is fucked up because that can, that, can, that can blow back on me. Okay? And so I get home, and I see this shit, and I'm sick. Okay, I'm sick, uh, and I was the only one working on the yard. I was the only one really doing stuff. I was asking my kids to help me out and they would help out as much as they felt like they wanted to. And then I was so sick. I said, you know what? I'm about to blast on these fucking kids and beat on them the way my dad used to beat on me. And they never grew up with that. So they're going to freak the fuck out. And then I'm going to go to jail or something. Cause the neighbor's going to see it and fucking snitch me out. So uh, I just said, fuck, whatever here, you do this, pick this trash up, go over here, do whatever. So I get out, and I see this shit, and I fucking lose it. I'm out in front of this dumpster screaming. I'm out there screaming, what the fuck, you fucking chicken shit, cock fucking fucking ass motherfucker. Oh, my Lord. I lost it so fucking bad. My wife just went in the house. Kids went in the house. My daughter had her friends over. I'm fucking, I come in the house. I'm still fucking ranting and raving, pissed off. I tell the kids, go upstairs, sit in your hot fucking room. Let me know if you see any motherfucker make a move towards the dumpster, you know? And and God was looking out for motherfuckers because nobody else came while I was at home because I was going to run out and fucking just let somebody fucking have it. I mean, you know, it's, it's one thing if, you're like, hey, man, I got a bunch of shit. Would you mind if I throw it in? And my son was here. They could have knocked on the fucking door. Uh, they just chose not to. And, you know, I man, I was I was beyond upset. I was beyond upset. So anyway, I, I finished. Uh, we cleaned out the office. Me and my son, we cleaned out that office. Uh, and I said, well, fuck, since they done already threw in major appliances and everything else fuck it i'll go ahead and throw some computers away i took out the hard drives and stuff like that because i didn't want my day to go nowhere but you know i threw the chassis away we threw a bunch of uh um i threw car hoods away that had knife holes in them the metal doors that had the knife holes in them uh i just threw a ton of stuff away that used to be in the backyard and the backyard is being renovated it's going to look really nice but it is a lot of fucking work. It is a lot of fucking work. And my wife saw, well, we'll just pay somebody to do it. I said, you know, it's going to cost a fucking shit ton of money to get it done. You know what I mean? Because we're in a process now of trying to fix the backyard so we can sell the house and move somewhere else. And um, I don't really want to move anywhere else. I like the spot. I think the spot's really fucking cool. Uh, I like the space. I think it's a perfect size for us. But my wife and her mother have their eyes on like a, uh, a nicer spot and I'm like man fuck that I go to a nicer spot I'm gonna have to deal with 
other types of assholes. You know what I mean? At least here, other than this shit that just happened, for the most part, people don't people don't really fuck around over here. They don't. You know, uh, I get. <laughs> I had pest control. I've had three pest control companies swing by recently, and um, I'm gonna act one out for you guys the way I answered the fucking door. Um, actually, I I don't have everything on me because I answered the door. I answered the door. I had this sitting under a, a shoulder shoulder harness. I just finished cleaning up, so my shit's not everywhere here. But I had it sitting there. <laughs> Hang on. <coughs> I had it sitting there, and um, I did it. Cause I put it on just because I was like, I'm fucking tired of these motherfuckers ringing my doorbell. So I went out, and so I, I have it sitting there, and I open the door, and I go like this. Hello? And I'm trying my best not to blink while I'm looking at this motherfucker. Like, I'm trying to hold this to stare. <laughs> he goes, um, yes, sir. Uh, I'm in a neighborhood. Do you know the uh, the Patricks across the way? No. Uh, do you know the uh, the Smiths over there? No. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, we're in the neighborhood, and we're uh, getting rid of pests. Uh, we're getting rid of uh, ants and spiders and uh, things like that. Do you do you happen to have anything any any problems like that? Spiders are my friend. Spiders do good job. Ants are nature's gar- um. What did I say? Uh, nature's uh, garbage men. They clean up the mess we leave behind. You ever see ants with blood? <laughs> this dude. <laughs> he gets shook. He gets shook so bad. He goes, "Oh, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, uh." So you don't mind the uh, the spiders and 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 ants and stuff? No, they're my friend. He's like, oh, uh, okay. Well, um, we'll be around the neighborhood, and if uh, we inadvertently happen to go in your backyard, um, can you please not shoot us? <laughs> and so I go, don't go in my backyard, and I just close the door. <laughs> so same company different dude okay different dude showed up uh yesterday yeah yesterday yesterday morning and i recognized because they had this bright like a white shirt with a bright green logo on it and i think the fucking dude must have heard the story but didn't realize which house it was okay because he came and I, was, I went to take a shit, all right? So I'm about to sit down. I'm about to take a shit, okay? And I hear the doorbell. The dog starts losing the shit. And, the, you know, my daughter had her friends here and stuff. And I'm like, fuck. I just want to fucking take a shit. I'm fucking sick. I just want to take a fucking shit. So I fucking pull everything up. I go run the thing. Fucking fling the door open. I look. What? And the guy's like, uh. And the, the young kid, a real young kid, right? He goes, ah. Uh, 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 and I go, are you here to get rid of my fucking spiders? He's all, ah, uh, no, you have a good day, sir. And he fucking, he just books. He just fucking, he books. I slam the door, run back, drop my trial, take a shit. That shit was fucking hilarious. I mean, that's, that's normally that's the biggest inconvenience we have in this fucking neighborhood. You know what I mean? That's it. It's not that big of a deal, but you know, every so often when I, I have a dumpster or something, you know, it's a pain in the ass. Like, the, my last dumpster, the neighbor that moved, he's gone now. This cocksucker came over and started throwing his shit in. And I told him, look, motherfucker. Because he knew I didn't like him. I'm like, I, I explained to him. I said, this is a neighborhood dumpster, but you call and request them. He was like, well, I didn't know. I said, well, fucking now you know. Common courtesy, motherfucker. He's like, can I put my stuff in your, your dumpster? I said, sure. Since you're asking politely, go ahead. You know, but oh man, I tell you, man, some people are just fucking dicks. They're just fucking assholes, you know. And I, I realized the shit I did with those kids that came over here, they were dicks. I was a dick thing for me to do too. But I told my wife, I said, 
Because my wife, you know, what's up, Ira Zombie Nation? None, man. I'm just sick as fuck trying to do this fucking stream. You know, try to keep people entertained and stuff. And I was telling them. Uh, so my wife, you know, we get these people coming and knocking the doors. I said, look, I want to I wanna make a sign that goes on my door and say, I'm not interested in solar. I'm not interested in pest control. I'm not interested in the Lord. I'm not interested in this, that, or anything else. Unless you're selling guns, knives, or comic books, I'm not fucking interested. So don't ring my goddamn doorbell. And my wife almost gave me permission to make that sign and put it up outside because she's getting kind of irritated too with the, the amount of people that are doorbell, uh, doorbell selling. I mean, it's getting so fucking precarious for these companies. They're getting hardcore. Just go knock on everybody's fucking door. If we get one person out of a thousand doors, we're going to be good. You know? But I was like, fuck that shit, man. Just stop fucking knocking on my goddamn door. I used to put a I had a sign up before. I said no solicitations, but them motherfuckers didn't. And one time I pointed at the sign. I said, you understand what that fucking word means, right? And the guy was honest. No, I don't. Oh, okay. Fuck it. All right, what are you selling? <laughs> You know, I was like, fuck, he's honest. I'm not mad at him for being fucking honest. <sighs> oh, it's a fucking... Here, hang on. It's a fucking cloth one. It's it's a cheap one I bought from Walmart, probably... Oh, my fuck. I bought that shit probably... Fucking, see, this is the problem when I clean up. I'll be honest with you guys, right? Fucking now, don't don't do anything important when your ass is sick because you tend to put shit. I mean, logically, you would say right fucking here is where I put my fucking my holster, but it's not fucking there. Anyway, it's just a it's just a fucking generic uh, nylon one. It's got a. Uh, it just extends forward. Like I, I've done streams before wearing it. I think people have seen it in the past. It's just a it's like a no name. No, it's not a no name. I think it's a uh Black Hawk. I think it's a Black Hawk. Uh I think that's the brand that sells over in fucking Walmart. Black Heart fucking shoulder holster. What's up, Green Man? Welcome, brother. You made it. Fifteen minutes to spare. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, it, it, it's funny because uh, um, I've had people like uh, when Comcast came through, I had a shotgun sitting right here um, and a few other guns. And, uh, oh, I got a fucking story for you guys. It's fucking hilarious. You guys will really appreciate this shit. Um, I'll get back to the Comcast piece in a second. So my brother-in-law, Chris, uh, from Free the Robots, came out to visit us uh, a few couple weeks ago. He came out to visit, and um, he was doing a tour. And one of the guys that he was touring with was a guy named Lefto, L-E-F-T-O, who is a uh, a DJ out of, um, oh, my God. Oh, uh, shit. It's not. Anyway, he's out of, he's out of Europe because I'm going to fuck up where he's from, and I don't want him fucking clowning me and all this other shit. So anyway, he comes and he's sitting here. We're having conversation and he's looking at all these fucking knives and shit. And uh, he goes, is that a pistol? And I'm like, yeah. So I go like this and he goes, can I see it? I go, sure. Hold on. So I go. Take out the round. Pop out the magazine. Visually clear it. Right finger it and then pop it in and then hand it over to him right the whole time this dude is freaking out he goes that was loaded I go yeah he goes that gun have a safety I go yeah you go where right there that's the safety he goes what do you say? It's not a pistol. It's a fucking couch. <laughs> I go, right here's the fucking safety. And he goes, uh, oh, but you've got kids here. I go, yeah, I do. 
That's why I keep a loaded gun around. In case somebody stupid comes and tries to break in my house and I fucking blow their ass away. He goes, but really, what's the likelihood of somebody, you know, breaking in your house and blah, blah, blah? I go, a uh, realistic assessment? Eh, maybe less than 1% chance. I said, but I deal in, you know, better better to be over-prepared than not prepared at all. And so I let him look at it, and then he goes, is that, is that a shotgun? And I go, yeah. You want to see it? I said, I'm not going to unload it because it's got 22 fucking slugs in that bitch, and they're fucking heavy, and they're hard to load up. I said, just don't fucking pull the trigger. It's, it's on safe right now, but, you know, just don't fucking pull the trigger. And he's like, oh, okay. So I hand it to him, like, and he's like, it's so heavy. He goes, oh, my God. I take it back from his hands. He's like, my God. My hands, it, 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 it's fucking shaking, you know? And I go, yeah, I know. You guys aren't used to being able to have guns and stuff. He goes, yeah, this is my first time ever holding a gun in my life. And he goes, uh, do you shoot on a regular? I go, yeah, I shoot all the fucking time, you know? And uh, it was cool because we started having these really deep conversations about different stuff. And he looked at me, and he was like, wow. And I could see... Exactly. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Exactly. That is the main point of everything. And so he goes, uh, it was cool because as we were having these conversations, we were talking about different things. I could see that the American stereotype of the typical gun guy was being destroyed in his mind because he was like, oh, yeah, you're a rational, well-informed, intelligent person. You know, <laughs> what Matt said. Um, and so it was a fun visit. It was a fun visit. It was good to, you know, talk with somebody from another country and see how things are over there and get another perspective on things. And so it was. It was really cool. Um, now there was something else I was going to tell you guys. Remind me in the in the comments. I was going to finish a different story before I got on that one. And I'm drawing a blank right now because we still got 10 minutes left on the show. And uh, I think that that uh, I want to say it's not Costco. I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. People have never been around firearms. So very little about gun owning mine. I grew up with two to three dozen guns in the house all the time. Never had any issues. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, Comcast. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Greenman. Uh, so Comcast came in the house one day and this guy. um this guy goes, uh, uh, I meet him at the door and he goes, uh, cause I have Comcast business. He goes, Oh, Hey, um, I'm here to install your, your new router and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. So sure, come on in. So he comes in and, uh, he goes, Oh, that's the old equipment. I said, yeah. So I point out and he's looking at all the guns and knives and stuff like that. And I could just see him going, what the fuck? So he balls up. And he kind of jokes. He goes, so are you preparing for a war or something? I said, no, I have a lot of foot traffic comes through, people installing stuff. In case anybody's dumb enough to go tell their fucking friends, hey, this guy's got computers and shit, I never leave the house, and I'm just itching to blow somebody's ass away because we're allowed to do that here in Utah. So I keep the shit around just on the off chance that somebody's dumb enough to try to come back and rob my house. And he looks at me like this. Yeah, that, I can see that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah, that totally makes sense. I said, yeah, because you realize most people that are dumb enough to try to come rob somebody's house kind of cased it in the first place. You know, they came through and saw a bunch of stuff, TVs, computers, things of that nature, and figured, hey, that's a good little lick. Let's go take that place. But you see the big fucking 345-pound guy with fucking 19 uh, knives and shit laying around of various lengths and shit and guns. Mm, maybe that's not a good house to go visit. Yeah, that's not a good house to visit, especially since he's home all the fucking time. So anyway, that dude, that fucking dude was shook a little bit. But as we were talking and stuff, he realized I was a nerd, too. And so he was kind of like, he's like, you're fucking, he goes, I've never, I never met anybody like you before. Because I have all this geeky memorabilia shit laying around and books and all this other stuff. And then I've got guns and all this other stuff. And he was kind of like, whoa, I, I, what do you do for a living? I said, <laughs> And this goes back to a running gag, right, that we've talked about on the show plenty of times. I said, oh, I do YouTube. He goes, oh, and he, just the look on his fucking face was like, 
oh okay i get it okay okay like like suddenly all the pieces made sense like i know he was trying to figure out different shit he's like this guy is too fucking flabby to be an assassin you know maybe something else you know whatever <laughs> it was pretty fucking funny though when i said youtube though he's like oh yeah okay okay and i shared that with chris and uh left though when they were here i was like yeah if you guys ever gonna get rid of a body set up a bunch of cameras in the car right put some put some blood on your stuff oh mother hell what i did not know that oh man moment of silence for fucking the og batman damn that sucks well you know i yeah that sucks with a a long fight but at the same time i'm kind of like you know my time comes to go like i'm not afraid to die i really am i'm not I'm way late. I stayed till the end and rewatched the beginning when it's uploaded. Oh, cool, man. Oh, he died. Oh, 88. Green Man said he's died at 88. Yeah, that sucks. But, uh, you know, time comes to go. Like, I think the only thing I'd regret is not being around to see my kids grow up. But other than that, I've pretty much lived a good life. I got a lot more shit left in me. I got a lot more stuff to do, but it's not like I'm going to sit there and beg and plead with a Grim Reaper. If a Grim Reaper shows up, I mean, like, you want to arm wrestle? I'm going to fuck with him a little bit. I'm going to have some fun with him. But I'm not going to be like, oh, man, fuck. I'm going to die now? Really? Fuck it. I'll be like, sweet. I get answers to a bunch of fucking questions I got lined up. And I swear to God, if I can ghost, I'm going to come back and haunt Roy's ass for a little bit. I'm going to haunt him just for a little bit, just to fuck with him. I'm going to knock a bunch of plates and shit on the floor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put red rum on a steamy shower window. You know, do all kinds of fun shit just to play with Roy. And I think, I think, I think there's, a, there's a few other people I'll pay visits to and just be like, Ooh, I am the ghost of the jackalope. <laughs> you know what I mean? But other than that, I mean, fuck, death, it is what it is. It, you know, it, it, it sucks that, uh, it sucks that uh, we miss when good people go. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, it's just a natural thing. So I get shocked when I hear that somebody dies because, you know, in my mind, there are so many people that I picture that for what yeah, ever irrational reason, I just, in my mind, think they're always going to fucking be there. You know what I mean? Like, a, like my mom, my mom is a perfect example of a person that in my mind, I'm always picturing she's going to fucking be there. If I fall down and go, mm, I hurt my elbow. My mommy will kiss it better. There's like a part of me that just thinks that's always going to be that way, you know, but I understand at the same time, that's very irrational. Like I look at pictures of my mom now and she's, she's a lot older. So, you know, it is what it is. Does, uh, Irish says our new male lady saw me for the first time a couple of days ago, came up to me and said, excuse me, sir, but I just wanted to let you know you're one badass looking. <laughs> <laughs> nice dude <coughs> oh fuck dude that's fucking funny let's see if you're a ghost and uh, bothered at my house I'm bringing it to the ground <coughs> let's see that shit cracked me up yeah that shit cracked me up too last reach Roger, uh, Roger Moore aka James Bond left us yeah I know I, I, I'm, I saw that one that was kind of sad I know what you mean when someone looks at you and gets a little freaked out by your size the amount of weapons you have. Yeah, pretty much. All right, guys, <clears throat> that's it. I'm getting ready to head out. I appreciate the fuck out of you guys hanging out. Uh, you got a lot of choices. Like Even when I'm sick, I try to do this shit for you guys. Last week, I couldn't. I, I, technology just got in the way last week, but uh, I'll have some stories about that next time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some rest now. Much love, respect you guys. And um, be safe. Keep your head on a swivel. Shit's getting crazy. Be strong. And until next time, later.